Um, next beer. Your favorite. <sighs> yes. Yeah, like Team this. lactose. <laughs> I've been waiting for this one. How do you guys feel about lactose? Clearly positive. It's a tool. <laughs> and it can be used. <laughs> no, no, that's... Are you a brew head? I'm a brew head. Are you a brew head? I'm a brew head. Y'all a brew heads? Yeah, we brew heads. So pour a glass of craft beer. We can do this. Yeah. What's good, y'all? This is C-Certified Brewhead, and welcome to episode 124 of Beer and Other Shit, the podcast. This afternoon, we are in glorious Point Clare at La Brasse Brewery. Thank you so much. Pleasure to be here. We got Troy, the founder, and Dan, head brewer. Gentlemen, thank you for having us. My pleasure. Thanks for coming. We have been uh, very happy to. Uh, we've been trying to do this for several months. Uh, too long. Yeah, too long. Yeah, it's, then winter happened. Then winter happened, and then... But now, you know what? It's spring now. Technically. It's raining. It was... <laughs> All week. Oh. I hope it stays. I, hope, I really hope uh, it doesn't. I think matter. it's going to freeze overnight again. <laughs> That's one thing. No, well, this whole week is not going to us. So right. It's going to be like mad hot. So maybe all the snow will go. I just don't want any more. Especially know. if you go down south. It'll stay warm all week. That's a good point. Maybe we should. I should. <laughs> Why not? All right, so uh, we're going to get into a bunch of stuff. Um, just before we start, of course, we have our uh, flights of beer. So we'll just talk about the one that we have here. So we have the Wicked Nor'easter. The New England IPA, our S- flagship. Yes, yeah. I love it that a Montreal brewery has a New England IPA as a flagship. Well, technically, we're the Northeast still, so that's true. So, yeah. do you get you don't consider yourself Montreal? Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, cool. We'll make yeah. sure I'm we're on the there. island. Yeah, technically we are, right? Yeah. Yes, Montreal. And the seven point one percent. Yep. Is that right? What's the uh, what's the hops in this bad boy? Citrona Zeca and all yes. first editions with five minutes to go in the boil, so. Trying to keep the bitterness down and get the hop oils, the aroma. It's as fantastic. Much as we can. Do you use like oats or anything like that for this one's wheat, actually. Wheat? Yeah, love it. Now this is really, really good. I'm super impressed. We were talking about it earlier. Yep. Um, I tried a few of the earlier versions when in, in growls before you canned it, and it was cool to see the progression. Like I felt like it just kept improving every time, and then by the time I had the can one, I was like, "Man, you guys like." That's it. We did had a lot of fun. I think trying different recipes, trying to get the the recipe locked down, and Dan did a fantastic job of of really settling on one one that that worked well. Tried as many hops as we could, and yeah. we're happy with these two. Yeah, that's a great, uh, really, really solid beer. And what do you have there, man? I got our farmhouse sale. Nice. So, so it's like so it's a saison, but not a classic saison malt bill. Try and get a bit of sweetness and some of that sort of toffee and dark fruit flavor in there. Nice. Yeah, I don't have time for the full flight today. So yeah, and that's okay. You're grab working something. On. So while we have you now, as you can tell, like Dan's in his full overalls and uh, gear, so you're in mid brew. Yeah. So what we're gonna do? We'll start with the um, beer story. So we'll start with yours yep. in the interest of time. Um, tell how'd you get into beer? How did uh, how did this all come together, man? So the first time I really saw a homebrew, I think I was like 14. My dad used to homebrew originally just to save money. But then we started playing around with different hops and yeast and started to have a lot more fun with it, but started probably spending more on our beer than for his cost. So. <laughs> but yeah, so I was young when I first started homebrewing. Uh, I did a science at John Abbott and then biochemistry at Concordia. The whole time in the back of my head, I really wanted to get into brewing. And after I graduated, got a job at one brew pub and eventually came here. As soon as I found out a brewery was opening in the West Island, I knew mm-hmm. I had to be a part of it. Nice. And I was able to get in the door for the first brew. Nice. Yeah. Um, so when you, from, how did it go from going from home brewing to actually brewing professionally? Like, was that like, you'd be home brewing for like, for a decent amount of time? Yeah, I mean, in the end, homebrewing is really great for trying different ingredients and getting to know the process a bit, but it is a completely different job brewing on a scale that's, uh, you know, I was doing 20 liter batches at home and uh, ever since then it's been like thousand liter batches. So right. it really is night pressure. and day. Yeah. yeah. Was it uh, difficult to get a job with just a homebrewing experience or was it pretty easy to move into I, don't, I mean, I sent my resume everywhere, mm. so I, it wasn't like I was trying for years, but right. uh, it did take a while. Okay. And that, w- w- is it necessary to have like the homebrew experience to, to get into this or not I so think much? so. I don't think no. you've, well, I mean, you've probably met as many brewers as me. Yeah. I've never met one that didn't homebrew first. Pretty much. I, I could probably think of count on less than one hand. It's very, very rare. Mm. Yeah. People tend to end up doing that. Okay. Sick. 
Um, and how did you get into BMO, man? Uh, I had a lot of time on my hands. Uh, <laughs> I was divorced several years ago, and half my time without my kids uh, gave me a lot of time to to want to find some new hobbies. So, like I was mentioning before, I, I wanted to pick up welding of all things. Right. Um, so I, I picked a project that I could could use that skill to build something with, something creative, and I, I picked brewing. So I've right. always had an interest in beer. Uh, I brewed beer when I was in, in college uh, many years ago, back in Alberta. Nice. Um, and built uh, our current pilot system in the back um, and started brewing in my garage at home. Nice. Uh, the beers started to, to come out you know, better and better, and people were really excited about, about this, uh, this passion that I had. So, um, right. Put a plan together and found this guy as a result of that uh, at 12 Boss Hour. Stole him from there and nice. made a deal. I love it. Yeah. Um, why Why did you pick the West Island? If you, I guess you said you're from Alberta. From Alberta, uh, but I've lived in the West Island for the past 12, 12 or so years. Okay. Um, and you know, it being the the Anglophone community of, of Montreal, um, I feel like. This is kind of where, where I belong in Montreal. Right. Uh, and there's a huge gaping hole for, for craft beer in the West Island. Right. There's nobody else here. Yeah, there isn't, right? Like, there isn't, I haven't heard yeah. of anything at all. <laughs> yeah. Probably not even that many. Is there a lot of bars, at least? Or not there's even? quite a few bars, yeah. Okay, yeah. that would stock a solid beer list? No. no. That's what I mean by bars, but <laughs> yeah. no. Okay, yeah. no craft beer bars, really? No, but it, it, it might change. We'll, we'll see. Okay. Um, there's, there's some... Some talking on the uh, the grapevine that there might be some places opening the West Island. That would be good. Yeah, I guess and, yeah, people always have to travel to the city. Yeah. yeah, there's definitely a demand for it out here. When we first opened, I was worried we'd have to try and convince people to try craft beer. Right. But everyone, you know, there's a great depth in Aaron Point Clare Village at History Pret, mm -hmm. and everyone here seemed to be like waiting for some good beer to be on tap somewhere. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. positive. Yeah, and there's there's uh, even big chains that are, are changing the way that they do their business. Uh, Jack Astor's, I don't know if you've heard of them. I used to work there, yeah. Okay, so they have their craft beer section now. Uh, the one in Dorval, they carry, they've been carrying our stuff. There's one in Quebec? Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Uh, I, would, I didn't know that. Many, many. Ontario. There's four, at least four around the area of Montreal. Interesting. Yeah, and we're in three of them, so. No way, okay. Yeah. I noticed the last time we, we happened to be there a few months back, and I noticed in, in Toronto, at least, there was a huge, like, hot, more than half the taps. Yeah. Where, where that when I worked there it was like 2004 it was a while ago but it was like they had 20 beers on tap and it was just Rickards blue yeah. blah 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 yeah. so it was nice to see that the chains are yeah. like they're, they're starting the to appreciate that people want that variety of beer that's and really cool it's it kind of plays to to I guess this generation they want they want what they want and they want it now and, yeah. and they want variety and it's, it's great that's sick that's really promising yeah. I feel like like more and more people are uh, in general just want better products whether it's food beverages like yeah. third wave coffee as well as yeah, like Simon pop i see a lot more like wine bars mm -hmm. popping up and people wanting like local wine or at least you know regional are starting to Stillaries show up too, too. Yeah, in so, what i haven't seen any here yet. so they're small there's a couple of places doing vodka and gins right now i assume they're working on whiskeys amazing uh, there's even a new brewery that opened up they have a they're going to be a distillery slash brewery. Okay. okay. They're in Rosemall, uh, Miko okay. Bastard Beauregard. Oh, yeah, I've heard of them, yeah. I've seen them around. Yeah. See, that's sick. I like that that's all growing, and I guess that a lot of the people who probably live out in it, like, this is not that far from the city, what, like, 20, 30-minute drive? Yeah, not far. Um, once again, still on the island, but... Uh, you know, maybe people are moving out, having families, wanting more land, and of course, their tastes, they're drinking good beer in the city, they don't want to come out to the yep. burbs and yep. drink terrible stuff. Yeah. So a lot of people were doubting us when we picked the West Island to open this place up, okay. and they're like, nobody out here drinks craft beer. I'm like, that that's right, um, but a lot of them drink wine, and a lot of people right. that drink wine also crave change, crave, right. crave different wines. They don't drink the same wine every day. Close. They like drinking, trying different wines every time they go to the SAQ. So mm -hmm. I think a lot of people that come in, I can convince them to try different things based on their wine tastes. And Interesting. Yeah, they, they appreciate that. And people are seem kind of open to oh, for sure. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Do you get yeah. the, the, the typical folks who might come in here and be like, I'm a cool drinker, what do you got? Yeah, we have those guys. Yeah. And we yeah. have a fantastic Pilsner that, that suits that needs. Mm -hmm. And then once they, they get into this, I guess that craft beer mindset, they're willing to try other things. And we've opened new doors to new, uh, new tastes to, to these kind of people. That's great. Um, the, I was about to ask about the clientele, the type of, is it mostly locals? 
Uh, it's a lot of locals. We have a lot of regulars. Yep. Uh, a lot of locals that are just hearing about us and, and coming out and trying it. A lot of businesses that they do their their events here. Um, but we have a lot because we're close to the airport. We have a lot of international people that come. They look up craft beer. We're the closest to, to the airport, so right. by default we win. That's convenient. Yeah, I like that. Um, what was the process like putting this all together? Like how did it, was it all pretty, like I guess you've expanded recently, you just got a new tank, so it's it. probably a smaller operation to get, to get it rolling? Yeah, it was a smaller operation in the start, uh, but a lot of blood, sweat and tears and perseverance and putting the whole plan together and yeah. finally, finally paid off. It worked pretty well. Yeah. So I know the, the, the move into cans was a relatively recent thing, probably uh, yeah, last summer? since the summer, yeah. Since last summer? Yeah. Fall maybe. Yes, yeah. uh, July 20th, when okay. I can the first time. That was I remember because yeah. I was out of town. <laughs> I was on my annual trip out west to see my folks with my kids, and uh, these guys were here canning and, and, had to make and sure. just distributing the beer. Yeah. Nice. Um, what what spurred the move uh, to cans? Um, it was a couple of different things. Uh, we have a bottling machine in the back. We always wanted to start bottling. Um, but in, in Quebec, there's a lot of hurdles when it comes to recycling and, and selection of bottles. And for us, it was just an easier move to, to switch the whole idea to cans. Yeah. Right. I think cans are the new thing that's coming out in Definitely. Quebec. Yeah. In Ontario, you, as you know, cans are everywhere. You can't, it's hard to find bottles anywhere. Definitely. So uh, we want to get onto that bandwagon. Um, and I think a lot of our beers survive better in cans quite likely uh we're, we're very ipa heavy here which is which is fantastic and yes indeed i think the the blockage completely of light uh out of the, the package makes that beer last a bit longer in right. cans so i know initially it was growlers predominantly like yeah. you got that full uh little he said spaceship little growler machine we which is super spaceship. sick yeah um the uh, how are the like people asking for cans like i'm just curious how you sort of move from like a tap room that uh you know i'm sure people would be like yeah i really enjoyed that beer i liked it better take it home and drink it later growlers are sort of like um what's the word like devi divisive sort of thing because i don't i've never been a big fan of them i don't okay. know a can is plenty for me because the way i drink and i know other people who are like oh man i always got like two two liters and i go to here and i'll get one of this one of this and yeah. that's their whole thing so i know there's different types of people like were, were people like asking for? Well, we always wanted to have our, our cans or bottles, whatever it was going to be, on shelves everywhere. Right. Uh, that was the initial plan. Uh, we couldn't do it with the size that we had to start with, um, but we put the plan together finally to get the, the cans going. Uh, and then that you know got us a little bit more revenue coming in so we can get some more equipment and then increase our capacity. So there was a lot of people that I had always asked for, for cans or bottles. It's just easier to, to bring a can somewhere right. instead of a whole you know, six pack worth of beer and a growler. So. Right. Was that always the aim to have like stuff on shelves and depths yeah. or whatever? Yeah. Because I've spoken to some people who like some breweries who, would, who didn't really care for that, but it was more like a, I guess it's more of a marketing exercise. Yeah. It definitely helps get your beer out to a bigger market and yeah. sell more beer in general yeah. that anyone can buy it and you don't have to come all the way to Point Claire to get it. Yeah, yeah. I think that's definitely a key thing. But And the good thing is that people do travel for beer. Yep. So they're going to go to a depth. And I've, I've, I, I see it every place I go. I don't think I can't really recall anywhere I've been where I haven't seen any of the cans, um, which is really good. Yep. So you've got the distro down nice. Yep. Um, but it's like... This, People will come out here for that, but maybe there's people like us who, you know, don't have access to a car, live on the island, and would like to yep. do that. So it's a cool way. So I have a lot of friends that, that don't have cars. Um, there's a you've met Frank several times. Uh, he rents uh, the Kuminoto uh, once oh, in a yeah, while. Yeah. He heads out here, gets his growler on, and <laughs> that's it. Fills up his trunk and, and heads home. So there's there's those guys that, that do that. I like um, that. And we're also members of uh, Pascal and Fruit. So okay. uh, there's there's a lot of people that come and, and take advantage of that that great product. So. What's that one? Is that like one of those like beer passports where they stamp it? And That's it. it. It's all up front. It's all digital right now. Yep. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's forty dollars for the passport, okay. and you can go to any of the. I forget how many breweries are on this list, but it's it's quite extensive. Um, yeah, we get uh, maybe fifteen twenty a month that, that come in just based on that Sick. on that program. Really? Wow. I thought that were really. I don't know. I never really considered doing those things myself, but I guess yeah. it's. For folks who just want to learn more about it, you don't have to yep. really do any research because it's more like, well, you pay for this thing, you just rock up, and That's it. what do you get, like a, a, a taster or something? Yeah, you either get a pint or a flight board. Um, it's up to the brewery, and yeah. everyone has to go different. be a bit different. I'm sure a lot of places will push the flights, but yep. 
That's great. And I guess the whole point, they'll try it flat. And like, oh, give me a pint of that, and they'll stick around. That's it. And That's it. Um, next beer. Your favorite. <sighs> yes. Yeah, Team lactose. Team lactose. <laughs> We're waiting for this one. How do you guys feel about lactose? Clearly positive. It's a tool. And it can be used. <laughs> no, that's, that's what I hate again. The the lactose is a tool. The right, no lactose thing. It can yeah. be very useful in certain styles. Uh, it can add that mouthfeel you want, some sweetness. But in, I've, I've had a few beers where it's just been done overboard, and it's it's hard to finish the beer because it's, it's just true. too sweet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you always, if you if you know how you're using it, why you're using it, then it can be super useful. Okay. Awesome. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, Dan needs a beer. Yeah. Run, run back and grab yeah, one. Yeah, grab it. Oh, that's great. This definitely got the, um, Noah Forrest, he always calls it like a stale icing sugar. That's what lactose <laughs> does to it. Because he's a hater. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck him. Too far. Uh, <laughs> no, I love Noah. I love him. He's the best. Um, I, I, I do like that, though. Yeah. I like that. It's like a gritty dustiness to it. Yeah. So I'll do join you, you guys on yes. Team Lactose. Oh, oh, yeah, we need Cheers. A, cheers, brother. Cheers. Yeah, that Team Lactose photo. Haven't had this one yet. Glorious. Yeah, this is great. Nice and balanced. Um, the mango. What do you use for the mango? Uh, puree. Puree? <coughs> is it the aseptic one? Yeah. yeah. So it's added just after high cruising. So after the peak of fermentation, we mm-hmm. dump it in. It's, um, it's a messy job. Yeah. <laughs> It's, uh, I'm trying to remember now, it's 70 kilos in our 1,200 liter batch. So there is a ton of it there. And then supported by the hops, it really comes out super fruity in the yeah, end. Yeah, super fruity. Where can we find Labrosse online, bro? Uh, Labrosse.com. Yep. We have a list of all of our beers we have on top. Perfect. Uh, we have 10 all the time, unless we run out, which is fairly rare. We try to keep them up to date. Uh, and a list of all of our depeneurs that we sell around uh, the island and even slightly off island, all the way to Belloy, nice. Pointe aux Trombe, uh, going west towards Vaudreuil, uh, and everywhere in between. Hell yeah. yeah. And uh, social media? Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Is it all the same? That's about it. Is yeah. it La Brasse Beer? Or La, La Brasse Brewery or Micro Brasserie La Brasse. Okay. Depending on the length limitation that each platform that each allows has. us to name it. Usually when yeah. we do that on the screen, Tiff 30. finds it and texts it. Yeah, it's like 15 characters on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Instagram's damn near unlimited. Uh, Instagram actually was limited oh, to 32, and we had to call it LeBras Brewery, which um, is angle phones. Is it? Oh, angle yeah, phones. I think so. Uh, angle phones. I, I love Ugh, disgusting. Yeah. Angle phones. Makes me sick. <laughs> um, yeah, bro. Thank you so much. I'm really glad we finally got to do fun. this. Yeah, yeah man. Genuinely yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. Um, guys, if you enjoyed the episode, mate, smash the thumbs up. Hit subscribe below. Hit the notification bell so you know when the new new drops. Follow us on social media at Beer West Podcast. And check out the long form audio so you can hear extraordinarily attractive gentlemen like Uncle Troy talk about craft beer. That is it, guys. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next episode. Cheers. Ciao.